everybody. Today we're going to talk about white privilege. And I know you're rolling your eyes already, but at the very least you clicked on this. And that means you're curious. And I'm curious too. So it's just going to be a little bit of a story. This isn't going to be some kind of preaching session. I know we all need to ease our way into this. And I'm hoping to help provide a little bit of perspective so that we can all have a better idea of our place in the world. So the story goes like this. I believe it would be winter 1996 to 1997. I can't tell you the month. All I can tell you is it was a snowstorm. It was a good one, too. Uh, I grew up in West Michigan near the uh, Lake Michigan Lakeshore, and lake effect snow is pretty intense sometimes. My buddy and I were in his truck looking for a party. We are looking for a party way up in Nuego County. Now, when I say this is BFE, this is legit BFE. In the middle of a snowstorm, it's a Saturday night, cruising, looking for this party in the middle of nowhere. We're basically lost. And we each got a 40, and there's some ganj in the truck, too. Yeah. Typical 19-year-old, suburban, rural, white kids out looking to have fun and maybe get in trouble at the same time. So we can't find the party. Next thing you know, cops are behind us. Now again, middle of a snowstorm, in the middle of nowhere, we're not on a highway, <sighs> trees all around. This is basically, we're almost, you could call it in the woods. Obviously it's not a two track, but we're getting pulled over in BFE. And so we're shitting our pants a little bit, right? Um, <laughs> we're underage, open containers, and probably a quarter of ganj. In the car with us, there's nowhere to hide it, right? We're screwed. Next thing you know, both officers come up to each side, guns drawn, hands on the dash, hands on the dash. Oh shit, hands go up on the dash, you know, and they start asking, where's the weapons? Where's the guns? Where's... They were convinced we had a gun. We don't have guns, sir. We don't have any weapons. We promise. We swear. You know, what's going on? Why are you asking us this? We, we have reports of shots fired from a vehicle matching your description. Okay. Whatever. Uh, they take us out of the car. They order us out of the car. Right? Again, guns still drawn. Order us out. Turn around, you know, pat us down real quick. What are you doing out here? Where are you going? We're screwed. We're screwed. You know they're going to look in the car because they're already pegging us with having a weapon. We know we're going down for this. What I didn't mention was that before they got up to the cars, we were getting pulled over. My friend and I, his name was Nate, we made the agreement that we're going to deny the weed. The truck was registered in his dad's name. We're going to blame the weed on his dad. The alcohol is, obviously it's illegal for us. We are underage, but the weed was illegal, illegal. So the story was, we didn't know about it. It was his dad's. All right, back to, we're now out of the car. And now we're each getting interrogated. They search the car. Obviously, they search the car. They find the weed and the, and the beer. Now they're interrogating us about the weed and the beer. Right? They've all of a sudden forgotten about the weapons and guns or whatever the hell was going on. Whatever the reason they pulled us over for, now we're in a different situation. Yeah. Totally, completely not typical, right? Uh-huh. So 
So before this gets too long, I'm in the cop car. Nate's at the front of the car. I'm getting interrogated in the car. He's getting interrogated out of the car. Whose weed is it? One of you is going to jail. Your buddy says it's yours. Right? They gave us the whole line of, he was told that I said it was his, and I was told that he said it was mine. But we both knew they were lying because we don't do that to each other, right? We had an agreement. Stick with the plan. We both stuck with the plan. They drag us out of the car after about 20 minutes of trying to get it out of us. And here's the kicker. They dump out the booze. They dump out the weed on the side of the road in the snow. And let us go. Yeah. So now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, Brian, that doesn't, that story doesn't prove anything about white privilege. Anybody could have been let go. Well, that's not the point. The point of this story is the entire time I had a gun pointed at my head, I never once feared for my life. That's the honest truth. That's my white privilege. I had a gun pointed at my head and I wasn't scared because it was a cop and cops were supposed to be good. Cops were supposed to be responsible. Even with all the bad stories I'd heard, it wasn't in me to fear for my life. I hope you got something out of this today. It's important we start talking about these things. It's been dragging on for too long. Thanks for hanging with me this time. We'll see you on the flip side.